Hello and welcome to a cup of conversation on BRT2 TV. My name is Jan Ghazi, your host on the program today, and I have a very new friend joining me in the studios. Just recently met, in fact, about an hour ago, we met here at BRTK in Left Gosha. Now, for those who have a good memory who have watched my programs over the years, you might remember that I interviewed a young Australian guy by the name of Scott Barrett. And today on the program, I have his mother in the studio, and her name is Suzanne Barrett, and she's actually a Turkish Cypriot from Australia. She came over for her son's wedding. Scott got married recently in Istanbul, but Suzanne has spent the past month with family and friends here in the TRNC, and she's kindly agreed to join us in the studio to talk about her life and about the wonderful wedding that she just attended for her son. So first of all, Suzanne, welcome to the program. Thank you, John. It's great to have you here. Thank you for taking the time out of your time here on the holiday in Cyprus to chat with us here at BRTK. I know you've been on the radio with Denise, now you're here with me on TV. And let's go back to the beginnings now. You've had a very colourful life when it comes to internationalism, shall I say. Yes. You're a Turkish Cypriot by your mother and father. Yes. Born in England. England. But have been living in Australia since the age of three. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's correct. And this is your first time on the island of Cyprus. Yes. Ever. Ever, yes. Amazing. <laughs> now, uh, your parents have the surname of Shukri, yeah? Yes. And so maybe you could be known as Susanna Shukri? Yes. So we have Shukri as a surname. Where are your parents, where were your parents from, Suzanne? My dad was from Buff mm -hmm. and my mum was from Lefkosha. And they left Cyprus, but you were born in the UK. What was the link to, the, to England? My father went over to England, from what I remember, before he met my mum and came back to Cyprus and got married and then they both went to England together. And then you were born? And then I was born. They had my older brother and sister in Cyprus, so they were born here in Cyprus. Mm -hmm. And myself and my younger sister were born in England. So you're a family of, of four siblings? Of four siblings, yeah. Right. And at the age of three, your mum and dad and the whole family went from the UK all the way to Australia? Yes, on a big ship. On a big ship. <laughs> so what was the reason for that? Do you know why uh, the family left the UK? Because, I mean, my family, my mum and dad, were, are from Cyprus. They left in the 60s to go to the UK and stayed there. Uh, so a similar background then. What was the well, We transition? left in 1965 to go to Australia. I think they were looking for a better life and a, di a change. It was and, probably easier. And it was easy to get to Australia back then. I think they got, it was cheap passage to Australia. Mm -hmm. And easy to find maybe work in Australia, get accommodation. Yes, yes. And where did they settle, first of all, in Australia, when you first lived we there? We settled in Melbourne, in a little town called Holmes Glen, and we lived in, they were huts, tin huts, round tin huts. <laughs> and... Um, that's where all the um, refugees or, you know, people that came from overseas went. They put them in there until they actually got homes. So were there lots of people like your family, lots of families going over from the UK to Australia at that time? Yes, there was. And uh, I know that there is obviously a, a big Cypriot um, community in mm -hmm. Australia, in all the yes. major towns. So there you are, so at the age of three, uh, you went to Australia, your education in Australia? Yes, I was educated in Australia. And where, uh, where did you um, grow up? You were growing up? I grew up in Burwood East, mm -hmm. which is in Melbourne. And we, I was there for 16 years. And then you finished school, high school? Finished high school and went to Geelong. And Geelong is a little town outside of Melbourne. It's about an hour's drive from Melbourne and it's on the coast. You make it sound like, you know, just outside of Melbourne, but it's an hour's drive. Now, in North Cyprus, an hour's drive would mean that you'd probably be out of the country, you know, <laughs> by the Karpaz Peninsula. That's where we went yesterday. <laughs> yeah, to the Karpaz. Yes. So, uh, but, but obviously, uh, the vast country of Australia, an hour isn't maybe isn't, too long. No, it's not. And people commute from Geelong to Melbourne for work. Every day they go an hour in and an hour home. This sounds so unfamiliar to us here in North Cyprus because mm. for us, an hour is just too much. Yes. You know, we, we commute five, ten minutes, maximum half an hour, <laughs> maybe if we're coming from uh, Gazimaus or from Guinea yes. or Guzelud. But So you were in Geelong. Yes. And what were you doing then? Well, after you graduated from high school, what was your? Uh, did you go into work? Did you study? 
I met my husband and I was, I was doing a lot of different jobs back then. It was easy to get work. Mm -hmm. So I worked in a supermarket and, you know, some retail outlets. And then um, I had my first child at around 20. So you're a young so mum? I was a young mum. And I know that you have three sons. Yes. And uh, I met Scott, who is your middle son. Yes. A few years ago when he came to Cyprus. And it's just so funny because he was, he left Australia to backpack around the world. And he came to Cyprus, again met with Julia, who is your cousin. Julia Okai yes. is our link because Julia is your first cousin. Yes. Your fathers are brothers. And uh, Scott came and stayed with Julia, stayed in Cyprus for a while. And he came on my program. Then he left to go to Turkey. Mm. And that's where he met his... His new wife. wife. Yes. Yeliz. And that's where it stopped for him, really. He, he met Yeliz, and Yeliz, who is uh, from Turkey, was actually studying in Canada. Yes, she's, she's doing her PhD in education. Right. So when they became an item, Scott then went to join her in Can Canada. Yes. So he stopped backpacking, went to Canada with Yeliz, mm. and they got married recently. Recently. In Istanbul. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Amazing. It was a most beautiful wedding. I'm so proud of them. I've seen the photographs. Yes. On a, on a yacht on the Bosphorus. Yes. That must have been a dream come true for everyone on it, that. It was. Boat. It was definitely a dream come It was like a magical evening. I mean, it's not typical, is it, of people to get married on the, or to have a reception on the Bosphorus, is it? No, it's not. But they chose to do that, something yes. different. So it must have been a, a magical fairy tale wedding. And because of that wedding, you came to Cyprus. Yes, and connected back with Julia. I now, I have to say, it must have been a very emotional time for you because, as we said at the beginning of the interview, you hadn't come to Cyprus in your life ever. Mm. And here you are now, sort of like catching up with people like Julia, your cousin, and other yes. relatives. What was it like to step off the plane at Ejan Airport and to look around and to say, wow, you know, this is where my mum and dad come from? It was a bit surreal, actually, Yeah. to step off that plane and think, wow, my parents came from here. And it's nice travelling around and seeing their roots and, you know, trying to imagine the place back when, you know, they were young. But, yeah. Your connection, obviously, is Julia because she's such a lovely, bubbly person yes. and she, you know, she's a great host. But, I mean, did you have any other contacts here of any other people that you could have met or was it all via... Julian, who she knew. It was all via Julian, who she knew. Yeah. So you don't, you didn't have any other cousins that maybe. You're, you're related to Julian from your father's side. That's what correct. about your mother's side? My mother's side, I never met any of. Like she's got a brother here, I never met him. Um, I've got cousins that I'd never met. So I've actually just started meeting them now and, and getting to know them and building relationships with them. But did you meet your, is your, is your mother's my, father? My dayer. Your dayer, your mother's brother. He's still alive, yes. And you met him? He's the last living one in Cyprus. I've got a days there in Australia. Right. So there's just the two of them left. So you met your uncle for the very first time yes. on this trip? Yes. Was that emotional for you? Yes. He must have like, been blown away that you, you came to Cyprus and, you know. Yeah, he was. And you met Getting a bit emotional. Yeah. And met his children. Yeah, his, all his children and yeah, it was just... Cousins. It was beautiful. Amazing. Wow. What a, what a lovely story. Yeah. Thanks to Scott. Thanks to Scott for getting married. <laughs> <laughs> and meeting Ellis. I'm getting emotional <laughs> as well. But this time mm -hmm. for you, emotional, but really, really, you are a spiritual person. And that's one of the yes. reasons why who <laughs> wanted to meet uh, with us, yes. you to meet with us, especially Denise on the radio and with me, because you have a spiritual background, aren't you? You are very, I very do. open yes. to healing, to angels, to, I don't know, positive energy. Yes. So let's go back to that now. I know that you, when you were younger, you, were, you, were, you didn't really understand that you had a certain talent, mm. a certain gift. What happened when you were growing up in Australia, when you were young and... I used, I used to see things back then and I remember I couldn't walk into hospitals without taking on everybody's pain and I thought I was a hypochondriac for years. I just thought I was one of these people that if someone was sick I'd be sick with them. So I actually believed that was what, what I was up until the age of around 33. 
But you didn't understand that was actually, this was actually a gift. No. For you. No. That you were actually talented. What happened? How did uh, I know? I heard the story that you told um, Denise on the radio. But what actually happened? How did you know that it wasn't something that you should, you know, be afraid of, but something that you actually should share with other people? Your talent should be shared. You were actually at a doctor's, weren't you? You were. I used to see a doctor in our little town that I lived in Clifton Springs, and. She would make me diagnose myself all the time. She apparently saw the gift in me and just went by my word. And this went on for a couple of years until one day I went in and I thought, you know, I need to, I need to get help. There is something definitely wrong with me. I'm seeing things. I'm feeling things out of the ordinary. You know, I would see people standing at my bed and I really thought that I needed to go on to some sort of medication or into an institution for help. And if it wasn't for her, I probably would have ended up there. But she saw the gift in me and she um, put me on to people that could help me. When they say help you, tell us what happened after that. Continue the story. So she, she gave you a number to She ring. gave me a phone number to ring. The lady's name was, was Kath Webber Martin and she was teaching Healing Touch at the time. Healing Touch is from the American Native Indians and it's the way they do the healing. And um, I rang Kath Webber Martin up when I got home and she apparently she was expecting my call. So I don't know whether they had talked previously or what it was, but I know the doctor didn't have time to ring her before I left the clinic. So she had that intuition that someone was going to call her yes. asking for help. Yes. And so what happened after that? Did you arrange a meeting with her? She actually arranged me to do a call. She rang me a couple of times and we spoke on the phone and I I started doing healing touch courses but the healings weren't um, I actually knew what I was doing I never took any notes once I started teaching it I actually it was all wasn't new to me it was it was like I'd, I've seen it before yeah amazing so you fell into this healing touch yes and it was like you know I, I've done this before I know this is this is natural to me yes what is healing touch what what happens Healing touch is it's, it's similar to Reiki, except you touch the body. So people heal better with touch. Touch is loving. So what I do is we, you've got seven layers of an energy field around your body. I come into that energy field and in that energy field is store, everything that you've gone through in life is stored in your energy field. Everything you're feeling, everything you've done, I actually walk into that. Once I've walked into that and I've assessed it, I actually start working on the body's energy system, which is called your chakras. Anyone spiritual usually knows what chakras are. There's seven energy points in the middle of your body and they look like cones, if you could see them, on both sides of the body. And I actually make sure that these are all unblocked and then they're flowing properly. And um, once they're unblocked and flowing, it actually balances the body up. Who does it help? I mean, is it for physical or mental problems? It is for or everything. Is it everything? I've, I've had cancer patients, I've had people with back problems, I've had people that get migraines, headaches, just general, they're feeling out of balance. So it actually works on pain, I can drain pain out of the body. It, it works on everything. You don't even have to be sick to have a healing. You can you just come in if you feel a little bit unbalanced and it will help. I know that uh, you know you believe in angels and the aura and everything. So when you meet a person, for instance, if you're in the right frame of mind, if if the atmosphere is good for you, can you see an aura of that person, or can you say, well, I think this person's got this problem here. I can help you with this, or this chakra is closed or unbalanced. Are you automatically in tune? Can you tune in easily to people around you? I can actually turn off. Because if I don't, then I'm open all the time and yeah. it does get a bit draining. I actually, people that are supposed to come to me, find me. They will ring me, I will book them in and then I become aware of their problems once they book that appointment. Once they book, it means that they're open to it. But you know, you can't just approach someone on the street and say, this is what I think is wrong with you. Of course not. Because you would freak people out. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but those who call you, obviously, wanting your help yes want, are open to whatever you're offering definitely you them. yes so you you have to close yourself off otherwise it's too much it's going too on. much i can't be in a lot of crowded places I, the energy gets too much for me and i start feeling like i'm out of balance and i, I feel dizzy 
So I usually try and limit myself to small gatherings. They say Cyprus is quite a spiritual country. Um, you know, a lot of background, a lot of history, yes. a lot of things going on. A lot of people get inspired. I mean, a lot of artists, a lot of mm -hmm. musicians get inspired by Cyprus. A lot of authors come here to write because yes. they find it such a relaxing place. What, whilst you've been here for the past month, have you found it more relaxing? Is it being good to be here? Or is it, I don't know, what's the atmosphere like for you? I feel it's really relaxing here. Um, it's been, I've grown while I've been here, spiritually as well. Wow. Um, I feel it's not as evolved as Australia, but there's just something about Cyprus that will draw me back again. You think so? Yes. You'd come back again? I'd come back again for a visit. That'd be, that'd be good. Hopefully it won't be so many years. No, I hope uh, in not. In between the next visit. <laughs> yes. Don't make another 30, 40 years or whatever, you know, <laughs> to, to come back. But so, you, do you actually work from home or do you have a clinic in Australia where people come and visit you? I actually work from home. I have a healing room at home mm -hmm. that I work from. And that's my job I do out of my day job. My day job is an esthetician. I work for a doctor. And um, he does, you know, all your Botox and I do all the... Um, facelifts and microdermabrasions and right. your fractional resurfacing and so there's two things that I do. So the beauty on the inside and beauty on the outside as beauty well. Beauty on the outside and my clients always get a bit of a healing when I touch them. So, so a facial a isn't free... just a facial for them. <laughs> <laughs> so a bit of a free consultation while, that, while you're doing all their work. I pick up things while I'm working on them because I'm actually touching them. Yeah. Is that just natural? It just happens to you, whether you want to do it or not. It just, you know, it just happens. You can't turn that off. Not when I'm working and touching someone. Yeah. I mean, when you shake hands with somebody, you get that sort of feeling, don't you, as well? Yes. I mean, even all of us. I mean, you might get a, a limp handshake or a firm handshake or yes. a warm or a cold. Is that is that what happens to you as well? When you see people and meet people and touch people, you get you must get more energy or, or, or electric from them. Some some times I do. Some people are really closed. Some people are hard to work with, but you know, most of the time they're open and warm. And Interesting enough, you said to your son before he left for uh, traveling around the world that he would meet a Turkish person. And you even thought maybe, or he might have thought that he might have met somebody whilst he was even in Cyprus, but he actually met Yeliz in Turkey. Yes. She's a, a Turkish national. But you actually had that feeling, didn't yes. you, before? How did that work? I mean, did you all, have, all of a sudden have this inspiration that he would find somebody Turkish? I just, yes, it just pops into my head. Because he was going to go around the whole world. Yes. He's been around the world. And he's been around the world. It could be anyone. It could have been. But your son's a very charismatic and... Uh, he is. He's a very good looking guy. He could have found any guy in any country he went exactly. in, I think. Exactly. Um, but he found Yeliz in Turkey. Mm. So you were right. Yes. He had that premonition. Yes. That he would meet. And the, you know, after a couple of years, they got married recently, like you said, two weeks ago in Istanbul. Yes. A magical wedding. And do you feel that one day they will return to Australia? I feel they will one day. I think they'll live in Australia eventually. Maybe when they have kids. Maybe. When you, <laughs> when you become a grandmother for... The, oh, I've already got three grandchildren. You got an older son. What's his name, your oldest son? Ricky. Ricky. Yep. And then you've got Scott. And then, Scott, and then I've got Kurt. Kurt. So you've got three handsome young men. Yes. In your life. And so, so Scott becomes a dad. He'll, he's the last one out of the, all of out them. Out of them, dad. all of them, yes. <laughs> um, but you never know. He might return to Australia with uh, the hope of maybe becoming a father, making you a grandmother again. That would be nice. And for you to look after the grandchildren. Yes, that would, would be like lovely. To? I'd love to. Mm. That'd be fantastic for you. But this is something that's going to be, you know, in a few years' time. You're still working very hard. Yes. So um, you're working during the day with your doctor mm -hmm. and with the you know the the Botox or whatever the you're doing, the esthetician side, yeah, face lifts and everything. And then when you have your free time, do you have free time to do all this? Not really. <laughs> In my free time, I'm running meditation classes, yeah. and I'm actually starting up. There's another girl in Geelong who does um, emotional release, and I've just got a new technique for my healings that I do, and we've actually incorporated them together. So we're going to be running workshops to other practitioners once I get back as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I'm going to have any free time at the moment. Plus with my healing clients, trying to get them in as well. Wow, there's a lot to, to, to fit into your day. So you also teach others 
I help teach you others, too. yes. So you are an expert in this, enough to be able to, to teach. Is it yes. a big thing in Australia, you know, the spiritual side? It is a big thing and, it, and it's growing every day. You know, years ago when I started doing the healing work, you couldn't really tell anyone. Um, people didn't actually understand it, but now it's growing and people are more becoming more spiritual and aware and having healings and going more to the natural alternative side of medicine rather than the mainstream medicine. Yeah. They're looking for different solutions. But why do you think that, uh, Suzanne? I mean, w the whole world is doing that now. It's not just yes. Australia, but even here in, in North Cyprus, I see more people who are doing maybe not as vast stuff as you, or maybe not exactly the same thing as what you're doing, mm. but things like Reiki are very popular now. Yes. And, you know, going to maybe more spiritual people, you know, things like basic yoga, doing yoga now is yes. very, very popular. Just connecting with your spiritual side. Is that something that the whole world is, is tuning into now because of such a, I don't know, term, you know, such a turbulent time in the world? Yes. People are just trying to get out rid of the negative, trying to find positive things yes. to go on to. I think people are more aware of the, their bodies these days. I mean, back in the early years, our, body, our bodies are made to heal themselves. Taking a lot of medication isn't good for your body, and they're realising this now that you know it's not good for your liver. And people have been on antidepressants for years; they they can't seem to get off, and it's a it's a vicious cycle. So they start looking at more alternative ways to wean themselves off their medication. You know, meditation really helps with people that suffer from anxiety because it, it helps you to find that inner peace and the inner balance within your body and you know more people are doing that rather than going back to the doctor and getting filling out more prescriptions that yeah. they actually go around in circles whereas if they follow a spiritual path they're actually growing they're experiencing life out of medication and everything starts looking clearer to them and they they're able to focus a lot better it makes sense. We not don't want not that be... I've got anything against doctors. Doctors are great. You know, they've got their job and we've got our job. Yeah, but this is all alternative. If it's not working for you, if you don't want to be, let's exactly. say if you are in a bit of a depression and you don't want to be using antidepressants all the time, yes. maybe meditation can be a way to help you and to, exactly. to lift your spirits. Exactly. Uh, uh, you, know, to, to, you know, we don't want to say no to, to normal, regular, you know, GPs and doctors. Yes. But, you know, this is an alternative. Exactly. They can maybe reach out to you and help you yeah. uh, when you're... You know, if there's, if there's alarm going on in your body, there's something wrong. And, you know, doing meditation or having healings actually calms that alarm, gets you in touch with your inner peace. You know, you get... When people have healings, I run them through breath work and, you know, how to look after themselves and maintain themselves and then they come for meditation and they're learning how to breathe you know we're, we're living in a world that's fast-paced everything's moving too fast and people just can't keep up with it so they need to just step back a little bit if they've got a place they can just sit down and just focus on their breathing become one with their body you know they find it really um, a lot better than taking drugs do you think stress is probably the major cause of most illnesses Yes. in our lives, like things like cancer or having a heart attack or being yes. ill. Um, the root cause of many of these illnesses mm. uh, is stress. So if you do um, find time to, to breathe properly, to relax and yes. meditate, do you think that you can maybe have a, you know, prolong your life or have a healthier life? Yes. And a quality of life? Yes, I do. That's something that is, you know, probably one of the fundamental things that we should think about yes. in our stressful lives, running around. But we don't always do it, do we? No, we don't. It's easy to think about doing it than actually sitting down and doing it. So what's your advice then, uh, Suzanne, if, um, you know, people watching now, if we have a busy life, we're working, we've got a family at home or, you know, we're yeah. running around, how, what would you advise to do? Just give yourself five minutes a day or...? Five minutes a day, you know, if you're working five minutes in your lunch time, sit at your desk, de-stress. You know, a good way of de-stressing is to clench your muscles, tighten them and then relax them. So you, you actually start to learn what it's like to walk around tense. You know, people walk around so tense these days and that's what's causing a lot of the physical things, that, ailments that we're getting and, you know, the way they're dealing with life. So five minutes out of your day, just concentrate on your breathing, go within, you know, and you can, and you can build it up to 15 minutes a day if you want to. But it's just getting into a routine, like even lying in bed in the morning before you get out of bed, you can start focusing on your breathing, bring yourself back into your body. You can go within 
and have a look inside. If there's anything that doesn't feel right, breathe it out. You know, it's, it's easy to do if you just, you know, focus a little bit. And even at night before you go to sleep. It sounds very, very interesting. Although probably you make it sound easier said than done. You know, you say to do it, but maybe, you know, when you're, when you're waking up in the morning and, oh God, you're thinking of what I've got to do exactly. today. And I've got to get to work and I'm running around and you've got to, you know, it, that five minutes you might not think that you have, but then maybe what you should do is set the alarm for five minutes earlier. Earlier, than normal. exactly. And then build it up to 10 minutes. Yeah. Because it is hard to just turn off everyone you know I find it hard sometimes if I'm meditating at home all of a sudden I think oh I forgot to put the washing in or you know the phone rings yeah. so it's probably easy to do it in the morning before you get out of bed and you know or what about at night before while you're lying in bed before you night time I mean there's a lot of meditations on YouTube mm -hmm. you can um, look up some night meditations and they run you through your breathing exercises and, and cleaning out your chakras and balancing yourself before you go to sleep and letting go of the day's issues. It's very interesting that, that you know, you, you're working during the day for something, I mean, don't get me wrong, um, you know, cosmetic surgery is important, but most of the time it's quite superficial, isn't it, when you think about how your looks are. Yes. I mean, if it's not for any other reason, just for looking good, or you know, I want to look younger, or I don't like my nose, or whatever. That's very superficial, but what you're working with for the rest of the time is actually very deep. Yes. Does it balance it out, do you think? You know, when you see all these superficial things going on during the day, oh, you don't really need it. I mean, you, know, you look very beautiful now. Mm. Uh, I think you look like your cousin, Julia. You, you know, you're very both charming ladies with beautiful eyes. Um, maybe, I'm sure you probably see people thinking, you know, oh, you don't need this, my dear. You don't need to do this to yourself. But they do, you know, people do yeah. go under the knife or they do go to, you know, to, to feel better, to look good. But then do you think to yourself, well, and I want to be in a more deep and meaningful state? Well, my doctor only does the Botox and the fillers. Yeah. And we do um, a non-invasive facelift. Right. We don't actually cut the skin. That's good then. So it's actually giving people an alternative rather than going under the knife. Right. So, you know, what I do, I suppose it is a bit mainstream compared to my holistic side yeah but you know you do have to work and you have to earn money and I'm good at my job so, so you, you, and you can balance both and I can you? I can balance both yes it fits in with each other yes. like we said inner beauty and um, outer, beauty outer beauty come together yes if you're happy on the inside you're happy on the outside as well you look exactly. more positive glowing radiating you know and like I said these people get just that little bit more from me yeah they get an extra but go to Suzanne <laughs> and uh, you get an extra yeah. thing whatever your book stand you get some healing done as well yes but everyone needs a bit of healing in their life I think There's probably everyone out there we yes. all need to, 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 to sit and just to you know calm down yes after a long stressful day yes or even a long stressful week even you know just take that five minutes out yes to, to look after yourself what's it been like for you now have you been um in the month that you've been here in, in north cyprus and it's been emotional for you yes. yeah we had a few tears earlier on but has it been sort of like you know a, a life changing experience for you to now, when you go back to Australia, will you take back some positive energy and positive yes, thoughts? Yes, definitely, back with you? definitely. Are you glad you came here? I'm definitely glad. Yes, I am glad I came here. It's been an awesome experience. And you had a good time to catch up with your family, and then of course, and see the sights of Cyprus. And Cyprus yes. itself, beautiful Cyprus. And yes. then you flew uh, for the wedding. Yes. Spent a three, uh, three or four days in uh, Istanbul, yep. which is a lovely uh, place as well. Have you yep. had you been to Istanbul before? No, never. Never. Had you left Australia before? Mark? I went to Fiji. <laughs> Fiji, that's it. And caught the ship over to Australia when I was three. <laughs> so this... Um, this is actually a first time for a lot of things, oh, yeah. Wow. And travelling by myself was daunting, but I did it. You did it. You made mm. it. You made it. I made it. And so glad that you did. <laughs> I'm so glad that you did make it and I'm sure that you're you're gonna go back with some great memories. Definitely. Will, you know. And some good friends and family and... Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, fantastic, fantastic. I know that you um, are here for the wedding, you're going back now, you've made new friends. Some people do healing around the world, like maybe if you were on Skype or if you were online all the time, people could come to you. But you are more hands-on, aren't you? You'd rather be with a person. I can do um, healings from abroad. So if you know anyone wanted to get in contact with me, they can contact me on Facebook. I've got an Ascending Wings page 
on Facebook and they can just write to me, send a photo of themselves. If I know what they look like, I can do an absent healing. Really? So wherever you are in the world? Yes. Um, you can sort of like, you know, send some... And have you got feedback from that? Do people really um, get that energy from you? Yes, they do. I've sent absent healings to people and they've rang me up and said, did you send me a healing last night? I felt it. So yeah, they do. Without even them knowing that you've done it, they feel it and then they contact you? They contact me. Amazing. Mm. Really is amazing. And I think that the world is now turning to all these healing practitioners, to those you know, to, who are a spiritual side. Yes. That's what we need now, to, to, to boost or to look after the spiritual... Our spiritual side, yes. Do you believe in reincarnation? Do you believe that you were here before and you'll come back again? Yes, I do. I think we've had many lives, some of us. Some of us are new. But yes, I do believe in reincarnation. I think every time you come back, you've got something new to learn, to evolve to your next level. People are saying about energy. I mean, okay, when the, when the body dies, the body dies and it goes back into the earth. But obviously we have a soul. The soul actually leaves the body and moves on. I think, I look at death as the, um, it's not final, it's the next journey to your soul's um, experiences. But our soul here, I mean, you know, there are good souls and bad souls maybe, you know, people who have done good with their lives here. If you haven't done anything positive with your life, if you're a bad person... You'll say, come back. You'll come back. And do it again. And, until you learn. Yes. And hopefully each time they come back, they evolve a little bit more. Like, uh, some people, I was reading recently about reincarnation, and let's say you have a birthmark, mm. and some people were saying that there's a birthmark on the baby, and there's like a little mark here, like a, a round, you know, strawberry yeah. mark, they say, and they find out that that person was actually shot in a previous life, and that's actually the shot wound. I mean, things like that, I mean, do you, do you believe in things like, you know, can you, can you regress, can you, do you believe in be, be, being hypnotised and maybe going back into previous lives then? Or I believe hypnotism is possible, but you have to find the right hypnotist. You have to have someone you trust. But I've actually, during healings, I've seen past lives in people. Really? That have come out, but it's only, they only come out if they're relevant to this life. So if they're going through something in this life that they're brought in from a past life, it comes out in a healing. And we discuss it. And then I make them aware of it so they can change it. Fascinating stuff. I'm sure that in Australia, such a vast country, such a developed country, that there are more and more people doing this. Maybe, you know, there might be hypnotists out there who can regress you yes. and tell you. Maybe, because there might, be, there might be issues now that you have in this life that, do you, do you think that sometimes we carry baggage from previous lives? Yes, we do. And we actually attract the same people sometimes mm. from previous lives just to learn something from them. You know, people come and go in your lives. Some people you learn some things from, and some people are there to stay. But I think we attract the same people in our lives. I mean, that's amazing. Or, or like when you meet somebody and you think that you met them before, or you have an instance, like you might meet somebody new, and you sort of like click that energy is, is right. You know, yep. and it's like as if you've been friends for 40, 50 years. Is that because maybe you might have known them before or there's that energy, positive energy? Well, I can, I can tell you a story on that. Go on then. I was at the gym one day and there was someone sitting next to me and I turned around and I looked at them and they looked at me and he said, do I know you? And I thought, well, I've never met you. But there was something familiar about this person and we became friends. And I remember meditating one day because it really got to me. This person was that familiar that I thought I'd known him for a long time. Yeah. So I started meditating and I asked where, where I knew this person from. And um, I started hearing people, children laughing and playing and women laughing. And then I saw a TP. I was in the TP. He came in and he was going off to fight and I knew he wasn't coming back. And um, I rang my friend up, as you do, after the meditation. And she goes, are you going to tell this person? I go, no. I go, they would think I'm crazy. So this person came for a healing and um, I was doing the healing on him. He got up and he goes, I know where I know you from. And I thought, this should be interesting. He said, don't laugh, it sounds a bit bizarre. And he said, I was looking down on a valley, he said, and I could see all these teepees. He said, and I walked into one of them and there you were, you've got the same eyes as you had in that life. And he said, and I was telling you, I was going off to fight. And he said, I don't think I've ever come back. I left you crying. 
and my jaw had hit the ground because I never spoke anything of this, you know, what I got with this person. So that made me realise that we had a past life connection. Amazing. It is amazing. You couldn't, you know, tell anybody else and then told him and then, you know, come back to you. Yes. Only you knew about that. Only I knew about that. Wow. Because it's not something you go around saying, hey, by the way, yeah. you and I were together in a past life. They would think you were crazy. Yeah. Very interesting. And I know one thing that uh, when I was listening to your interview with Denise was that, you know, you, um, the angels and that we are all at birth given to angels and the yes. angels change. But my wife is very interested in, in angels and angel cards and like calling a healing angel, you know, Raphael or, yes. um, you know, all these different angels that we have. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you work with angels as well? I work with angels. I actually, I don't know if anyone's heard of Doreen Virtue. I actually did a workshop with her. She's the angel person in the world. She, she makes all those angel cards, they're all hers. And um, yeah, I do believe in angels. And I call them in when I do healings and I've got guides that also work with me. So I work with um, you know, a lot of different angels and guides and they come in specifically for the person's treatment. So whichever angel or guide I need will come in you know, and, and it's not the same ones all the time. You might laugh at this. My, my wife, for instance, she, she's, um, when she loses something, let's say, in the house, she can't find something, she then meditates or she thinks about, you know, she asks the angels, can you tell me what it is? And then, and the, and then she gets a message. She goes and finds it where the message, you know, they say, oh, look in this drawer or yep. you know, it's in the car or, you know, it's under the seat in the car or behind the sofa. And she finds it. Yep. Archangel Shamuel's a good one for that. Yeah. That's the, it's a finder uh, angel. Yeah. <laughs> You have to believe. Do you, do you think that the more you believe, the more you're receptive you are, and the more these things work for you? Or, can we, or should we all do it, really? Well, I think... Because there must be some sceptics out there from what you're... The sceptics are getting a few. Yeah. Like, there's not as many. Over the years, you know, I had people making cross signs at me. They wouldn't even stand on the same side of the road with me because I did healings. They found out I did healings. Apparently, it was the devil's work. But they never knew my heart and, you know, they didn't know what I did. Yeah. So I just used to have a little laugh at myself. But these days it's like from 20 years ago, 22 years ago, it's developed, it's gotten bigger. There are more people that believe. And I think it's where you're at in life as well and how evolved you are. You know, I don't get people mocking me anymore or, you know, they're more interested than mocking me about what I do. And it, it, it's talked about more. After raising three men in your life and how you started off, um, you know, leaving high school, getting married, working, and then did you ever think that you'd end up doing what you're doing now and that having this life and, you know, looking back and saying, wow, you know, because you've achieved mm. so much, mm. you know, you, you, you've got your family, they're growing up now, yes. you've got grandchildren, your final son, you know, your middle son, Scott, got married. You had a lovely wedding, mm. you know, you came to Cyprus. Could you have ever envisaged doing any of this? No, definitely ago? not. No. What, what, what life has brought for you is, is amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. And it's still unfolding. It's, it's like a, a parcel, I suppose. Yeah. More adventures on the More horizon. More adventures on the horizon, definitely. Yeah, looking definitely. forward to that. Yes. I have to say thank you once again very much for coming today to BRCK. I know that you're leaving the island soon. Yes. You only have a few days left before you have to go. And I know that uh, you, each moment is precious that you're spending with your, your family yes. here. But I hope you have a safe flight back to Australia and that you come back to Cyprus again in the future. I definitely will. Um, you know, now that you know what this country is all about, Yes. You've done that journey once, you can do it again and again and again, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> and it won't be such a big break. No, you know, definitely not. Make sure that you come back again. I will come back us. again, definitely. Send our regards, our best wishes to your family, especially to Scott. I and will. And his new wife, Yelis. Thank you. And uh, once again, thank you for sharing your life with us here as well. And I wish you all the best. And finally, for those who want to find you again, now you've got Facebook, your normal Facebook, Suzanne Barrett. Yes. Uh, the, the other page that you have? It's called Ascending Wings. Ascending Wings. Yes. If you write that on Facebook, we'll find you. Yes. So if anyone wants to contact you, maybe chat with you. It's got a pink and green logo. I think there's another Ascending Wings of someone in America, but right. yeah. Look out for the pink and green logo <laughs> and uh, look out for Suzanne Barrett and maybe some other members of your family who haven't met already might come out and find you. I hope so. That would be fantastic. That'd be really good. Yes. But thank you, Suzanne, for everything. Thank you so much, John. You're welcome. And see you again soon here in North Cyprus. One thank day, you. maybe. Yes.
definitely. I keep in contact via Facebook. I will, definitely. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. And with that, we have come to the end of a very interesting couple of conversation with Suzanne Barrett or Suzanne Shukri. Maybe if her family in North Cyprus wants to look her up, it's Shukri. Her family was uh, originally in Shukri, but she's on Facebook now and it's been a pleasure to have her here in the studios. And good luck once again to her family, especially to Scott and Yelly's. Congratulations on your wedding. And with that, we come to the end of the programme. Until the next time we meet in the studios of BRTK and Kosher, take care and go well. Bye-bye. Thank you.